Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review the first two books in Jen DeLuca's Well Met series of romance books. The first book in this series, which is predictably titled Well Met, was published in 2019 by Berkeley Books, which is an imprint of Penguin, and the paperback comes in at 336 pages. Both books that are out so far in this series, and therefore the ones that will be discussed in this video, are contemporary romances, but they both have a fun twist to them. They have the backdrop of a renaissance festival. The books take place in the fictional town of Willow Creek, Maryland, which for 10 years, at least at the start of this first novel, has hosted its own small scale but still very successful Renaissance festival. Now Willow Creek is a very small town, but it feels downright tiny to the main character of this first book, Emily, who moves to Willow Creek from Boston in the wake of a bad breakup. Back in Boston, Emily had essentially shelved her life and the pursuit of her bachelor's degree to help her boyfriend at the time get through law school. But when he eventually graduated and found that high-powered job he was after, he kicked her to the curb. Hence the move. Emily leaves the big city behind to move to small town Maryland, not just because she doesn't know where else to go, but also because her big sister, April, who happens to live in this town and is 12 years her senior, has just recently gotten into a very bad car accident. She's having trouble getting around in the aftermath of this event, so she needs Emily to move in and help her with house stuff and with her 14-year-old daughter, Caitlin. And it's a good thing that Emily moved in because they there is indeed a lot to help out with, including driving her niece Caitlin to the signups for the Renaissance Festival where she wants to volunteer that summer. However, when they arrive, they are informed that no teenager is allowed to sign up if they don't have an adult to sign up to be a volunteer with them. And thus, Emily gets suckered into being a volunteer at this Renaissance Festival herself. She ends up working as a tavern wench alongside an experienced fair volunteer, Stacy, and she ends up really liking it. She even sees areas where it could be improved upon, where they could be more efficient or sell more drinks. But anytime she makes a move to improve anything or anytime she even suggests that anything could be done differently, she has the fair's organizer, Simon, breathing down her neck. He doesn't want to change anything. He seems to really dislike Emily. He's generally a hard ass. As the fair goes on throughout the summer, these two keep making bad impressions upon one another. Emily keeps annoying Simon, and Simon keeps bucking every suggestion she tries to make. They just really don't seem to like each other. However, when Simon's in costume and in character at the fair as the devious pirate that he plays, he shows Emily a lot of attention, almost as if he likes her. We slowly start to find out why Simon is so possessive over this fair, and we find out that these two characters might have a whole lot more in common than they originally thought. We also start to learn more about the other Stars Hollow-esque inhabitants of this town. I really loved this first book in the series. Of course, it's ideal for anyone who enjoys the hate turns to love type of stories within romance, but it's also just extremely nerdy, which I am very into. Simon is an English teacher at the local high school, so he is very invested in the authenticity of this event. And also Emily, before she dropped out of college, she was an English major and she ends up working at the bookshop in town. So these characters have that in common and it pushes this book ever so slightly into the books about books category. Spending time with the characters at the Renaissance Festival is just so much fun. Fun, you end up falling in love with it in almost the same way that Emily does. I mean, it's a tried and true method for storytellers to put an outsider character inside of a world so you can see it through their eyes for the first time along with them. And it's definitely effective here. I mean, Emily didn't even mean to spend her summer volunteering at the Renaissance Festival, and yet she gets all swept up by it, and it's really hard not to be there with her. The writing flows really easily, and it doesn't feel forced in the slightest. I have read a few romance books where it feels like the author is trying so hard to be current that they make the reading experience really cringy. That is not the case in this first book or the second book. DeLuca makes both of these books really readable, and they are current, but in a natural way. The dialogue is really 
smart, it's witty, it's definitely extremely funny, but it all seems believable like things people would actually say. It was a complete and utter joy to read this novel, basically, and therefore I was delighted to see that its sequel, Well Played, was released this year, the year that I'm releasing this video, 2020. This one also comes in at 336 pages. This book obviously takes place in the same world as the first book, centering around the Willow Creek Renaissance Festival, and the events of this book take take place one year after the main events in the first book, and in this second book in the series, our main character is Emily's friend and fellow tavern wench, Stacy. Stacy's a touch on the basic white girl side. She loves her PSLs and her Instagram, but there's also a lingering sadness and a boredom to her. She loves working at the fair every year, but she can't help but feel a little bit trapped, a little bit caught in a rut because unlike Emily, she grew up in Willow Creek. She did move away for a little bit. She was off chasing her dreams of working in fashion merchandising, but when her mom got sick, she moved back into town. And there she remains, even though her mom has pretty much gotten completely better. She now works as a receptionist at a dentist's office. She hits up the bars on weekends, and she eagerly awaits the return of the Renaissance Festival every summer. She anticipates it every year, not just because the fair has the special magic that we readers will know by this point, but also because she has a regular no strings attached hookup arrangement with a seriously hot musician who stops at the fair every year. Dex McLean, who Stacy says looks like a Hemsworth only in a kilt, makes up a band with his two brothers and they stop at the Willow Creek Renaissance Festival every single year and every single year he and Stacy hook up. Even though Stacy knows that this is a no strings attached kind of thing, she ends up thinking about him after the band has left town after the Renaissance Festival has ended. So she, after having having a few too many drinks one night, ends up sending him a very long, rambly, cringy message telling him that she's thinking of him. She is mortified by her actions the next morning, but the two actually start a really nice back and forth that lasts a whole calendar year up to the point where the fair is getting ready to start again. But it's at this point that Stacy starts to realize that she might not be talking to who she thought she was talking to for a whole year which is a problem because she's caught some feelings. Even though there are similarities between the first and second books in this series, I mean, they're both contemporary romances, they both have the same Renaissance fair at the center of them, and they both basically have the same cast of characters. You will see a lot of familiar faces from the first book, they're just a year or two older. I feel like this book couldn't be more different than the first. The nature of the romance is entirely different and also the pacing is totally different. What is the same in both books though is the effortless or at least seemingly effortless storytelling. Nothing gets in your way in these books. She makes it so easy to binge through them because there's nothing clunky. There's nothing weighing you down. Characterization and exposition are lightly sprinkled in. Everything just goes down so easily. It was so nice to be back in this world and back at the Renaissance Fair, which actually happens twice in this book because it happens over such a long stretch of time. There's one fair at the beginning of the book and one fair toward the end of the book. However, overall, I didn't like this book quite as much as I liked the first one, and there were two big reasons why I felt that way. The first had to do with Stacy's voice and her actions. I didn't feel that Stacy's voice was very distinctive in general, but also I didn't feel that it matched her actions. She's telling us throughout this book that she's feeling the itch to do something different, that she's feeling restless, but her actions don't mirror that. She's just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And also, while it was nice to see Stacy's relationship with this guy, we'll call him this guy, blossom over time as opposed to over the course of just one summer. I mean, they were talking for a year and really had time to get to know each other. It felt really nice, a whole lot more realistic. I really didn't like the pacing. I felt like we fast forwarded through that time that they were getting to know each other and then everything slowed down to a normal pace 
when it came time to have the fair again. I really didn't like that inconsistency. Because of those gripes, I ended up giving the second book in the series four out of five stars, whereas I gave the first book five out of five stars. I do, however, think it is totally still worth your time to read this book if you liked the first book in the series. I still very much enjoyed it, even if it didn't have the whole falling in love with the fair magic to it that the first book did have. There is going to be a third book in this series that's due to come out next year in 2021, and it's going to be a romance between Mitch and Emily's older sister, April. And in this second book, we did ever so briefly get to see sparks fly between Mitch and April. It made me all the more excited to see the third book in the series. I am so curious about how that's going to work, especially since April insists on calling Mitch Kilty. I'm assuming that the third book in the series is going to be a little bit more like the first book in the whole hate turning into love kind of romance, and I'm also assuming that it's going to be the final book in the series. So those were my thoughts on the first two books in the Well Met series. If you've read either or both of these books or would like to read either or both of these books, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you would like to connect with me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!